Hello and welcome to Memory Matters, the virtual talk series hosted by the Johns Hopkins Alzheimer's Disease Research Center. My name is Jennifer Deal. I am an assistant professor of epidemiology and otolaryngology head and neck surgery. And today I'd like to talk about hearing loss and dementia. What's the connection? As part of this talk today, we'll talk about three questions. The first is just what is hearing loss? Second, we'll talk about whether hearing loss is related to dementia, what we know, and the reasons why we think there might be a relationship. And then finally, we'll talk about what we should do if there are any concerns about our hearing. So let's start by talking about what is hearing loss. So let's talk about how hearing works. You can think about hearing as happening in two parts. The first step happens within the inner ear, and the second step happens within the brain. The whole job of the ear is to take sound from our environment and to convert it into a sound energy. That energy is then sent to the brain. So you can think of it as an encoding step within the ear. Sound from the environment goes into the ear. It's encoded into that energy, into a signal, and then that signal is sent to the brain where it's decoded. You may have heard of the cochlea. That's the spiral shaped organ within the inner ear. And that's really where this works. That's where this happens. The whole job of the cochlea is to take that sound and turn it into an energy that gets sent to the brain. With hearing loss, however, there's actually damage within the cochlea, usually to the hair cells. And what that means is then the cochlea isn't working as well as it used to. So it used to be able to take that sound and encode it into a really crisp, clear signal that then went to the brain. So for example, for a cochlea with no damage, you may hear a sound, you should go to the pharmacy before you go home. That sentence would be encoded into a signal that is very clear, very crisp for the brain to decode. However, what happens when the cochlea is damaged is now parts of that sentence we may not be able to hear so well anymore. So instead of hearing the entire sentence, instead maybe we would only be able to hear parts, such as you would go to the arma e, e or you go to your owl. So instead of the entire sentence, we just get pieces of it. So it's no longer a crisp, clear signal. Now it's garbled, now there are pieces missing. And what that means is that the brain has to work a little bit harder to decode that speech and understand what was being said. So in the clinic or in a research study, we may measure hearing using something called audiometry. The woman pictured here is having an audiometry test done. She's wearing over the ear headphones just like I am, or sometimes we may also use insert earphones. Those are like earbuds that you might get with an iPad or if you purchase a new smartphone. So you are wearing the hear you're wearing the earphones and the person behind the woman in the photo is an audiologist. And the audiologist plays a series of tones and those tones will range in pitch from low to high. They'll also be played at various volumes. So some may be quite loud and some will be soft. And the goal is to figure out how well the person can hear across that range of pitches and across that range of volumes. So how quiet can a tone be for a given pitch that a person can hear? We visualize the results of that test using something called an audiogram. And there's an example audiogram pictured here on the right-hand side of the slide. So you can see at the very top, that represents the sounds that are really quite quiet. So something like whispering or rustling leaves. And then down towards the bottom of the audiogram is where sounds that are very loud would fall. So things like a police siren or a jackhammer. Pictured here in pink is the area of the audiogram that is really important for speech. So if someone is having trouble hearing within that range, that means that they may have trouble understanding speech, particularly if it's in a noisy environment. 
Hearing loss is common and it does increase as we age. So this is a research study from our group. The graph shows the prevalence or the proportion of people who have hearing loss, and that's along the y-axis. And then that's by age group along the bottom of the graph. And you can see as the age group gets older that the prevalence really increases quite dramatically. And the way that we summarize this overall is that two out of three older adults who are age 70 or older have a clinically significant hearing loss. And by that, I mean it's a hearing loss that is severe enough that it can impact their everyday quality of life and their everyday communication. So to summarize from this section, hearing loss is common and it does increase as we age. Hearing loss usually occurs because of changes in the inner ear, specifically to the cochlea. Most hearing loss often occurs though gradually as we age. So it's not something that happens all at once, it's something slow that happens over time. And sometimes it's so slow that we may not even be aware of it as it's happening. Hearing loss is important because it can make it more difficult to understand speech, particularly in a noisy environment. And if you go get your hearing tested, the doctor may use audiometry, which really measures the faintest tones that you can detect across that range of pitches. So now let's talk a little bit about what we know about the relationship between hearing loss and dementia. So this has been a question that researchers recently have been very interested in understanding. So there have been quite a number of studies that have tried to understand whether there's an association between hearing loss and dementia. And overall, on average, there are a number of public health studies that do suggest that hearing loss may increase risk for dementia over time. But what's important to keep in mind is that hearing loss is treatable in most people, and we can treat hearing loss using amplification devices like hearing aids. We also have other strategies that we can use, including rehabilitation strategies. And currently, right now, research studies are trying to understand if we treat hearing loss, does that impact risk of dementia down the line? So can it delay or prevent dementia from occurring? I'd like to talk a little bit about why we think that hearing loss might be related to our thinking abilities and so ultimately potentially to dementia. So one mechanism, one way in which hearing loss and thinking abilities might be connected is through something that we call a common cause. And this is just something that leads both to hearing loss as well as impacting our thinking. So for example, we know as we age, as we get older, we're more likely to have hearing loss. We also know that thinking, uh, loss of thinking abilities can occur most often as we age too. So it may just be that because we're getting older, we're experiencing hearing loss and also having some concerns about our thinking abilities. So it's just the age that's leading to both. It's not that hearing loss is directly connected to our thinking processes. But there are actually some more direct ways, more direct pathways by which we think hearing loss could actually lead to changes in our thinking abilities. And the first pathway is something that we call cognitive load. And cognitive load is just the mental effort that's required for recognizing and understanding sounds and language. So to understand cognitive load, we can think back to when we first talked about how hearing works. And we gave the example of this sentence, you should go to the pharmacy before you go to your house. We said that when there was damage to the inner ear, to the cochlea, that signal now is no longer crisp and clean. It's not clear when it's sent to the brain. Instead, it's garbled and parts of it are missing. And what that means is that the brain has to work just a little bit harder to try to decode that signal. But that can come at the expense of doing other things like making a memory. And so that's really what we mean by cognitive load. It's just that effort, extra effort that the brain has to use in order to decode that garbled signal. 
Another pathway by which hearing loss could lead to changes in our thinking abilities is through increasing social isolation and loneliness. So this won't happen for everyone, but it may be, particularly if hearing loss is happening gradually over time, that individuals maybe even not being aware of their hearing changes may start to recognize that they're having trouble hearing in noise. And maybe that might cause them to disengage, not to go out as often, particularly to noisy environments. And so what that can mean is over time, that can lead to a loss of the social connections we have. And it may also impact how lonely we feel, whether we feel we have a really good number of friends and high quality friendships and people that we can communicate with. And we know from a number of research studies that loneliness is very important and that it can lead to things like cardiovascular disease. Um, it can even lead to an increase in mortality over time. And so it may be if individuals with hearing loss are experiencing more social isolation or greater loneliness, that this could ultimately impact how someone is able to think and process and understand. And finally, it may be that hearing loss can also directly impact the brain. And so it may be that untreated hearing loss can result in brain changes, and that may even ultimately lead to changes and loss in brain tissue. For example, you can imagine that if we're not using the part of our brain that processes sound, maybe over time we would lose some of that brain mass because we're not using it. In this case, we know that there are important uh, risk factors for our thinking and for dementia. These include uh, Alzheimer's disease pathology. These also include cerebrovascular disease, so something like stroke. On top of that, we think that hearing loss may be this third factor that could potentially add to someone's cognitive load, potentially add the and potentially lead to them losing brain mass over time. So we've talked about some pathways by which we think hearing loss could lead to dementia. I think a really important question to understand is if someone has hearing loss, does that mean they'll get dementia? And the answer is no. So hearing loss may increase risk for dementia, but that does not mean that everyone who has hearing loss will get dementia over time. So to summarize this section, there are some public health studies that suggest that hearing loss may lead to an increased risk of dementia over time, but we don't yet know if hearing loss directly causes dementia. We know that there's a relationship, it may increase risk, but we don't know the nature of that relationship yet. But we're working really hard right now to find out. So there are many studies underway trying to really understand the nature of this relationship and whether hearing loss is a direct cause directly related to dementia. But what's important to keep in mind is that hearing loss we know is related to poor quality of life and poor communication. And so hearing loss is important to treat irrespective of its, of its relationship to dementia. So what should we do if we have concerns about our hearing or maybe we have concerns about the hearing of a loved one or a family member? So the good news is that hearing loss can typically be treated. And again, we can treat it usually with uh, rehabilitation strategies, so talking about how to communicate more effectively. We can also treat with amplification devices like hearing aids. So we strongly encourage you, if you have concerns about your hearing, to talk to your doctor. They can refer you to an audiologist who can measure your hearing, and then they can give you advice on how best to go about improving your hearing and better, being better able to communicate with those that you love, whether you're in a noisy environment or whether you're in a quiet environment. So thanks so much for your attention today. We appreciate you tuning in. We'll see you next time.